안녕하세요. You are going to learn how to say I want to do something in Korean in this video. Let's go. Let's learn how to say I want to do something. You are going to learn another assistant predicate which means want to do. Yes, you are going to use an assistant predicate even though want to do part is not an auxiliary verb in English. It seems that these assistant predicates take a very important part in Korean, right? The direct translation of the verb want is 원하다, 원하다 in Korean. It's funny because they both start with kind of one sound, want and 원하다. But you are not going to use this verb to say I want to do something. You can use it, but you need to go to the next level to learn it. For now, you are going to use a totally different assistant adjective. Let's see how it looks like then. 고 싶다. 고 싶다. When you want to say, I want to do something, you add 고 싶다 to the stem of the main verb. This assistant predicate 고 싶다 is used basically with the verbs, but people use it with adjectives in many cases these days. So we wouldn't say that you cannot use it with adjectives. But remember that basically you use it with the verbs, okay? Again, stem plus 고 싶다. This 고 sound is a connective ending. It is impossible to specify or define the exact meaning or usage of this connective ending 고. We once said that it could be the abbreviation of the conjunction end. But it was just to make you understand better when you learned about the present continuous form 고 있어요. Yeah, it makes sense too, but finding out the reason why 고 sound is used here is not your job. Let's leave it to the scholars. We recommend you should just memorize it together with the assistant predicate 싶다 as you did with other assistant predicates. 싶다 is not an assistant verb, but it's an assistant adjective. Again, it's not a verb. It's an adjective. Yes, it matters. We'll tell you why later. 싶다 means you have a desire or a need for predicate before the connective ending 고. That's what makes it mean want to do. You don't use this assistant adjective 싶다 alone. Therefore, please do not try to use it like other transitive verbs. We told you 싶다 is not the direct translation of the verb want. Okay? It is always used with another predicate. Please remember that. And this is the important part. Please listen carefully. This 고 싶다 is normally used when the subject is first or second person. In other words, when the subject is I or you. More specifically speaking, when the subject is the first person and the sentence is in a declarative form, and when the subject is the second person and the sentence is in a question form, and when the subject is third person, you normally use stem plus 고 싶어하다, 고 싶어하다, 고 싶어하다. Yes, 어하다 is added at the end. Why? It's because this adjective 싶다 is used to express subjective feeling or desire. So it is used to directly express the subject's mind. So when the subject is I, the first person, you can talk about your desire or feeling subjectively. No problem, right? And when the subject is you, the second person, you can directly ask the second person how they feel and the second person answer to your question subjectively using the same predicate 고 싶다, no problem. But when the subject is he, she, or they, the third person, you normally add 어하다 at the end to describe about the third person's feeling or desire because 어하다 part roughly means to feel the quality that the main predicate has. You need this part to describe someone else's feeling or desire because you cannot directly feel the feeling or desire that the third person actually has. So you cannot directly say you feel this feeling, but you need to describe or explain about the third person's feeling. That's why this 어하다 part is added. 
Is that clear? So the first one, 고 싶다, is used to directly express the subjective feeling or desire of the subject. And the second one, 고 싶어 하다, is used to describe or explain about the feeling or desire of someone else. So you might want to ask, what if I'm a mind reader or a novelist and know the exact feeling or desire of the third person? Then you can use 고 싶다 for the third person. No problem. You can even use 고 싶어 하다 for the first person or the second person, even in a real life conversation. You can see this in a novel written in an omniscient viewpoint that the writer knows everything about this person because the writer created him or her. But you don't have to know this right now. Why make things more complicated? So just use 고 싶다 for the first person and the second person in a question form. And use 고 싶어 하다 for the third person. That's enough. If you perfectly understand what you've explained, then use them in whatever situation you want, if you can use them correct, okay? In casual o n o r a f i x of course, 고 싶다 becomes 고 싶어요 and 고 싶어 하다 becomes 고 싶어 해요. You know how 하다 became 해요, right? And in formal o n o r a f i x 고 싶다 becomes 고 싶습니다. The stem of the assistant verb 십 plus 씁니다. It's pronounced 십습니다. 십습니다. Right? Not 십습니다. The final sound of the 십 sound actually sounds 부 consonant according to the seven final sounds rule. And it affects the initial 스 consonant of the next block. and turns it into double s consonant. And the final b consonant of the s sound turns into m consonant because of the initial n consonant in the next block n according to the nasalization rule which doesn't have an exception. So it's pronounced 싶습니다. 고 싶습니다. Okay, and 고 싶어 하다, 고 싶어 해요 turns into 고 싶어 합니다 in formal o n o r a f i x The stem 하 of the last assistant predicate 하다 plus the final 부 consonant and 니다. 고 싶어 합니다. 고 싶어 합니다. 싶어 is actually pronounced 싶어. 싶어, according to the sound linking rule. And the final 부 consonant of the 합 sound turns into final 무 consonant because of the 느 consonant in the next block 니, according to the nasalization rule, right? 싶어 합니다. 싶어 합니다. 고 싶어 합니다. Now you can say you want to do whatever you want to do. Isn't that great? Let's make actual sentences then. I want to speak Korean fluently. Let's rearrange the words. I and the object Korean and the adverb fluently which modifies the predicate because modifiers are positioned right before the word that is modified in Korean. And the predicated part speak want to. or want to speak, whatever. You're gonna add the assistant adjective, which means want to, at the end of the sentence in Korean anyway. I, 저는. Of course, you can use 제가 with the subject particle 가, but it means I am the one who wants to speak Korean fluently, as you know. Or you can get rid of the subject I, if you think it's understood. Korean. 한국말 or 한국어. Let's use 한국말. It's an object, therefore you can add the object particle 을. 한국말을. 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 Fluently. It's an adverb. The base form of the adjective fluent in Korean is 유창하다. 유창하다. The stem is 유창하, 
if you add k sound to the stem of this adjective, it will turn into an adverb. 유창하게, 유창하게, speak one to or want to speak. The base form of the verb speak is 말하다 in Korean, and the stem is 말하. But when it takes the object, which means language, speech, or story, you can get rid of 말 sound from the stem 말하 and just use 하 sound to prevent redundancy of the meaning because 말 means language or speech too. So the stem 하 plus 고 싶어요 하고 싶어요 저는 한국말을 유창하게 하고 싶어요. 저는 한국말을 유창하게 하고 싶어요. It's too easy, isn't it? Then let's use the third person as a subject. My friend wants to speak Korean fluently. My friend, Korean, fluently, speak want to. My friend, my is 제 in honorific sentences. Friend is 친구. 친구. My friend, 제 친구. Let's use the subject particle 가 this time. Why? There's no reason. Just want to show you that the subject particle 이 or 가 is also used in a conversation actually. 제 친구가, 제 친구가. What's the nuance with the subject particle then? Yes, as you know, it sounds like my friend is the one who wants to speak Korean fluently. You can use the subject particle when you want to point out that your friend is the one who wants to speak Korean fluently. Like when someone asks you, is there anyone who wants to speak Korean? You can answer with the subject particle 이 or 가. My friend is the one who wants to speak Korean. Okay, we keep explaining about the difference between the subject particle 이 and 가 and the auxiliary particle 은 and 는 because it is very difficult for you to understand this. Anyway, 제 친구가, 제 친구가, Korean fluently part is the same. 한국말을 유창하게, speak one to. Because of the fact that the subject is the third person, it is better to use 고 싶어 해요, 고 싶어 해요, instead of 고 싶어요. Okay, so the stem 하 plus 고 싶어 해요. 하고 싶어 해요. 제 친구가 한국말을 유창하게 하고 싶어 해요. 제 친구가 한국말을 유창하게 하고 싶어 해요. Too easy. Of course, you can use the auxiliary particle 는 for the subject 제 친구. 제 친구는 한국말을 유창하게 하고 싶어 해요. 제 친구는 한국말을 유창하게 하고 싶어 해요. It can provide a nuance of comparing or changing the topic, okay? Let's see the next example. I want to go to the toilet. Could be useful sentence. We normally say, where is the toilet though? But there might be the situation where you need to strongly appeal to someone for letting you go to the bathroom. Who knows, okay? I, to the toilet, go want to or want to go. I, 저는, to the toilet. Toilet or bathroom is 화장실, 화장실 in Korean. It originally means a makeup room where you do your makeup because 화장 means makeup. But nowadays it is used to mean the toilet or bathroom. It's your destination, therefore you can add a particle 에, 화장실에, 화장실에, 화장실에. Go want to. Let's put it in the formal honorifics this time. The stem 가 plus 고 십, plus 씁니다. 가고 싶습니다. You know it's pronounced 십습니다, right? 십습니다. 저는 화장실에 가고 싶습니다. 저는 화장실에 가고 싶습니다. 저는 화장실에 가고 싶습니다. You can take out the subject 저는 in a conversation. 화장실에 가고 싶습니다. 화장실에 가고 싶습니다. 
perfect. Now you don't have to hold it just because you don't know how to say I want to go to the toilet. Where do you want to meet? Let's make a question sentence with an interrogative where. Let's rearrange the words. In Korean, you put the subject you first and then place a related word where, right? Even though it's an interrogative adverb, the position of the words does not change in Korean. And then the predicative part, meet, want to. You, where, meet, want to. Very simple. You don't have to mention the subject you if you don't know how to address him or her in Korean anorphic sentences, right? Where, 어디. The main verb is to meet. It's an action. Therefore, you can use the particle which is used to indicate the place where the action takes place. 에서 어디에서 어디에서 meet want to the base form of the verb meet is 만나다 in korean 만나다 the stem is 만나 you add 고 싶어요 to mean want to 만나고 싶어요 만나고 싶어요 you know 싶어요 is pronounced 싶어요 싶어요 not 싶어요 Okay? Because of the sound linking rule, right? 어디에서 만나고 싶어요? 어디에서 만나고 싶어요? Where do you want to meet? 어디에서 만나고 싶어요? Very simple, isn't it? Let's make a higher respect sentence. Since the subject is you, you can use the higher respect form if you think the subject is someone who deserves one. Where 어디에서 part is the same. Meet one to. There are two predicates in the predicative part. One is 만나다 and the other one is 싶다, right? You can turn both of the predicates into higher respect forms. The higher respect form of the verb 만나다 is 만나시다, 만나시다, 만나시다. You simply add she sound to the original stem 만나 because the last letter of the stem doesn't have a final consonant 만나시다 and the stem is now 만나시 and the higher respect form of the assistant adjective 싶다 is 싶으시다 싶으시다 you add 으 sound first before 시 sound because the stem ship has a final consonant it's so obvious isn't it ship shida shipshida and the stem is ship shi shipshi in order to mean want to you need to add go sound after the stem of the main verb manashi and go shipshi in order to use the anorophic ending yo, you need to add o sound first. 만나시고 싶으시 어요, right? But this 시 and 어 sound have to be combined because 시 sound doesn't have a final consonant. 시어, 시어, 셔. 시어 becomes 셔 sound with a 여 vowel, as you know. So it becomes 만나시고 싶으셔요. This one is also correct, but as you know, we normally use 새 sound instead of 셔 sound. Therefore, let's use 만나시고 싶으세요 for this sentence. 만나시고 싶으세요. 어디에서 만나시고 싶으세요? It's a question. 어디에서 만나시고 싶으세요? We are explaining the entire process, but you can just remember that 새 sound is used for the higher respect predicate when the anaerobic ending yo is used. No problem. Some might say that it is not proper to add 시 sound to both of the predicates, or there is a possibility that you might hear native Koreans add she sound only to the last predicate in many cases, but believe us, there's no problem. 
we promise you will never be able to find a fixed rule. Plus, nobody knows the exact rule, not even National Institute of the Korean Language. As we told you, it's more about culture than grammar. Furthermore, both of the predicates are related to the subject anyway. There is no problem to add a she sound to both of the predicates. It would sound even more polite. No worries. Then let's put it in the formal honor of fix. 어디에서 part is the same. 만나시고 part is the same too. As you know, the higher respect form of the last assistant adjective 쉽다 is 싶으시다. And the stem is 싶으시. You just simply need to add the final 부 consonant and 니까 at the end because it's a question. 십으십니까? 십으십니까? It's pronounced 십으십니까? You know why. 만나시고 싶으십니까? 어디에서 만나시고 싶으십니까? 어디에서 만나시고 싶으십니까? Strangely, the interrogative ending of the higher respect form, 니까, sounds more formal than the declarative form, 니다. I wouldn't use it in a conversation with anyone unless it's for fun. It sounds like soldiers talk to their senior soldiers or someone is making a speech to the audience. It's their choice, but I would use the casual honorific ending yo all the time when I'm asking a question to someone in a conversation. Let's see the next sentence. I want to share the knowledge that I have. See how complicated the sentence you can make now just based on what you've learned so far. It's amazing. It's not complicated as it looks though. Just the entire clause that I have part modifies the object knowledge. And you already know how to make a modifier. Let's rearrange the words. Let's put the subject I first. The entire that I have part modifies the object the knowledge. Therefore, you position the clause first and then position the object knowledge. There's nothing to reposition within the clause. That I have is just fine, although the relative pronoun that is useless in Korean. And the predicated part, share, one, two, comes. I, that I have, the knowledge, share, one, two. I, 저는, that I have, we don't need that. I, normally you use the subject particle, 이 or 가, for the subject of the close modifier. 제가, 제가. Have. The base form of the verb have is 가지다. 가지다 in Korean. But this verb 가지다 is a little bit strange. When you want to indicate the present tense, you should use the present continuous tense or the past tense as if you mean you have already had it. Why? Because of the characteristics of this verb. The direct translation of the English verb to have is 가지다 in Korean, that's correct. Nothing is wrong about that, but Korean verb 가지다 in the present tense sounds more like general or habitual action or event or a temporary present state. When you actually own something, you use the verb have in English and it does not indicate general or habitual action or temporary present state but it indicates you literally own that thing in your hand or in your property. So when you want to say you have something in Korean, you need to use the present continuous tense to indicate that you are actually having this thing. Of course, it's not grammar in English, but anyway, you need to indicate that the state of owning something remains going on. That's why you normally use the present continuous tense to say you have something with the verb 가지다 in Korean, okay? Or you can use the past tense to indicate the actual moment you obtained this thing in the past and still have it right now. Strange, but understandable, right? Okay, very good. So the stem of the verb 가지다 is 가지. And you need to add a present continuous ending to mean you still own this thing. 고 있다. 가지고 있다. 가지고 있어요. But you don't need the ending 다 
nor oyo. You just need the stem of the assistant verb itta. So kajigo it plus the ending nun, which turns the stem into the modifier in the present tense. Yes, now you can use the ending nun. We told you that this ending nun does not only indicate present continuous tense, but it also indicates that the same tense that the main predicate indicates, or the tense the speaker is talking about. Remember, the main predicate is in the present tense. Therefore, you can use the ending nun to indicate that you have this thing now. Kaji plus ko it plus nun. Kajigo it nun. Kajigo in nun. It nun is pronounced in nun with a n consonant because of the seven final sounds rule and nasalization. Kajigo in nun. The knowledge. Knowledge is chishik in Korean. It's the object of the sentence. Therefore, you can add the object particle. Ul. Chishik ul. Chishigul. Share one two. This is the easiest part. The base form of the verb share is nanuda. Nanuda in Korean. Nanu is the stem. In order to mean one two, you need to add the connective ending go and ship or yo. Go ship or yo. Nanu go ship or yo. 나누고 싶어요, right? I, 저는, that I have, 제가 가지고 있는, the knowledge, 지식을, share one two, 나누고 싶어요. 저는 제가 가지고 있는 지식을 나누고 싶어요. 저는 제가 가지고 있는 지식을 나누고 싶어요. Perfect. As we told you earlier, you can use the past tense for that I have part. How do you make the verb modifier in the past tense? Yes, you need to add n consonant to the stem ka ji because the last letter of the stem doesn't have a final consonant. So you can use ka jin instead of 가지고 있는. 저는 제가 가진 지식을 나누고 싶어요. 저는 제가 가진 지식을 나누고 싶어요. Why did we say you can use the past tense for the that I have part in Korean? Yes, it's because you can indicate the actual moment you obtained such knowledge in the past in Korean. And you still have it. It's like the present perfect tense in English. So, 제가 가진 means you obtained this knowledge in the past and still have it. Okay, very good. Okay, this is the end of lesson 8 part 2. You're gonna learn about transitive adjectives in Korean, which can take an object like noun in the next video. 그럼 다음 video에서 만나요. 안녕히 계세요.